The Celtics Talk Podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. What's up, everybody? Off day edition of the Celtics Talk Podcast here on the NBC Sports Boston Podcast Network. And let's face it, like the parent team is so good. I needed something else to talk about. So you know who's got a big game tonight, a playoff game? The G League Celtics, the main Celtics are in action. Jordan Walsh, J.D. Davison, if he's healthy enough, uh, will be playing their first round game after they got a little bit of a bye. They're the number two seed up there. In advance of that game, I got a chance to jump online, talk with Jordan Walsh about his rookie season, about the balance, being up in Maine and evolving your game, but also being part of of this Celtics run. And it's an exciting time for Jordan. You think about it, he hasn't got an, a huge opportunity here with the parent Celtics. Only six games, 40 total minutes on the court, but you're going to get the playoff experience in Maine. Once that season ends, he'll join the Celtics for their playoff run. And even just getting to be part of that bench could be hugely beneficial. I started thinking back, even like the 21 22 season, you know, Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett, guys that were in the G League getting to be a part of the Celtics playoff run and just you know, learning from that and then getting their opportunities further down the road. On the backside, we'll talk a little bit about how the Celtics are maybe have some guys in the pipeline. We talk a lot about their superstars and how expensive this roster is going to get. I'm starting to think about, like, how do you fill that thing out? Guys like Jordan Walsh could be really, really important sooner than later as these contracts start hitting the books. But let's let's get right to the good stuff. Here's our chat with Jordan Walsh. Under 90 seconds to play. There's Kata. What a look. Jordan Walsh on the stop. That's a great cut out of the corner. A nice pass by Kata. That's Celtics rookie Jordan Walsh. And now joining us from up in Maine where he's getting ready for the start of the G League playoffs is Jordan himself. Jordan, thank you for taking the time to join us on a what's going to be a crazy start of a part of the year with uh, everything going on. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, thank you for inviting me. All right, let's start with you guys getting ready for the G League playoffs now. Take me back to Saturday down in your, your native Texas. Career high, 27 points, five threes. You had to hit, hit a big three, free throw at the end of that game. What was that like? Um, it was amazing, you know, to be back home and to be able to, you know, show out in front of my family and the fans, you know, it's an amazing feeling. But also to clinch, you know, the second seed, you know, to have that by the first game, and to have it, um, their next game be played at home again, you know, it's an amazing feeling. I'm glad that, you know, our, us, you know, and the organization could achieve that. Yeah, so you guys play on Thursday night up at the Portland Expo. Tickets available on MainCeltics.com. Take me back to last week, the Celtics were in Atlanta while you guys were playing down there. A lot of your teammates got a chance to come out and see you. What did that mean for you to see some of the personnel out there, guys supporting you on, on the court? Uh, I mean, it was amazing. Um, you know, I'm around those guys a lot, but I feel like it was even bigger for, you know, the rest of the guys on our roster, you know, being able to to be there and interact with those guys and, and see them supporting them at a game. Um, obviously, you know, it's always good to have, you know, two organizations who are supposed to be one and the same, you know, come together at an event like that. And for it to be that game and for us to, you know, play well and for it to go well and you know, you know how it went, but for it to go out how it did, you know, it was still an amazing opportunity for those guys to be there and support and, you know, not just the players, but, you know, the staff, the coaches, the player development guys, you know, people you see on a daily basis or I would see on a daily basis that, you know, now my teammates like James Banks and Tony Snell get a chance to meet and interact with. It's an amazing feeling. So uh, even Sam's talked about wanting to go up to Maine during the season. Obviously, that's where he kind of started and got his. When, when you look at someone like Sam, does that give you like a roadmap for how, you know, your career might play out sort of a lot of G League this year, but a chance to, the, to further down the road for, for this thing to expand? Um, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, before me who have been successful doing what I'm doing, have been successful in the path that I'm going. And Sam just happens to be one of those people. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's nice because he's somebody I can talk to and I, I see a lot. Um, and also it was big for him to, to come out and support as well. But yeah, to know that, you know, the blueprint is successful and not just this organization, but, you know, for other organizations as well, with people doing the same thing that I'm doing, you know, it definitely gives me a, a certain level of comfort. Um, at the same time, I do want to fight for, for a future that I want. So I'm always going to be competing, always going to be fighting for that next opportunity. But to know that it is possible and it can be done is definitely a, 
a feeling that makes you feel better and helps you sleep at night. Take me through that mindset. Like, what, what do you envision, you know, for, for further down the road? Do you let yourself start setting goals? What are your conversations like with Joe Missoula when you're talking about that potential future? Like, how does that all work out in your mind? Um, I mean, well, it's all pretty much um, day by day, to be honest, um, because, I, you know, you go up and down so much. It's always like you could be here one second and be in Boston the next second. And it's kind of like just always staying ready. Um, I'm always in like a certain mindset of, you know, you never know when your chance can come. You never know when your opportunity can come. So to be able to always have a mindset of, oh, I'll be ready whenever it is time or I'll be ready whenever my name is called is important. And uh, for the times that I do go into Boston, I get a chance to play or I go to Boston, I get a chance to practice against those guys. You know, I always try to, you know, I serve myself with somebody who's there to, to stay and who's going to be there to compete at a high level. Not many rookies get the chance to join a team with championship aspirations. What is it like when you are around this team? What is it like to, to know what this team is capable of and, and be part of that? I mean, it's amazing. Um, you know, not a lot of people go through their whole careers without having, you know, playoff experience. Um, but, you know, in my first year, I'll be able to be in the playoffs with a team that, you know, has a chance to, to do something special. And so to, to have that, you know, in the first year definitely sets, might set a standard for me for the future, which, you know, could be good or bad. Um, but to be able to, to have that experience and, you know, to start off my career around such great guys like Al, JT, and KP and Drew, um, to start my career with those guys in a place like Boston where, you know, the mentality is winning, you know, the standard is winning, but also being a good person and, and you know, doing it the right way. So to have that experience is definitely an amazing feeling. I'm super excited for playoffs with Maine and Boston. And I, hopefully, you know, we can get we can get two of them this year. As someone who sort of, I would say you're a defensive-minded player, defensive first player, when you watch the, the, this group of Celtics, like who jumps out, like from a defensive standpoint when you watch this group? Because Jalen's talked about wanting everybody to get all defense votes. You know, who jumps out when you're on the court with these guys? Um, a hundred percent Drew Holiday, um, a hundred percent, um, just his technique and the angles that he takes when playing defense is amazing to me. Um, JB also just because of his competitiveness, you know, his grit to just want to guard somebody and shut them down makes him super special on the defensive end. But obviously they're both good players, you know, on the offensive end as well, but you know, to have them, you know, have things in their game that I can take and and add into my game to make me a better defender or maybe a better offensive guy is, is very important. Um, and for them to be willing to offer up any information that can help me in my journey is also as important. So I definitely appreciate those guys for, for helping me and setting a good example, for sure. Well, take me through that. Who's been in your ear throughout this whole time? I know you said when you first got here, Al Horford was talking to you. I think he gave you a whole bunch of recommendations on movies like Godfathers and stuff like that. Have you completed your, I guess, winter reading list or winter movie watching? And like, what? Who's still in your ear right now? Um, so right now, I would say, you know, I, I pretty much talk to everybody uh, when I get a chance to. But you know, Al is definitely still one of the one of the guys who I, I talk to when I go up there. Um, and sometimes it's not it's not about like you know basketball or or anything like that. It could be about something random like traveling or, or food or anything like that um but when it is time to talk basketball you know he gives me a lot of insight on the game you know because al is one of the guys who transformed his game to be able to fit in this league and he done he's done he's been great at it he's super successful with it and he's, he's one of the best um so i definitely appreciate him and his wisdom um on and off the floor 100 percent. now when it comes to godfather though i couldn't <laughs> see we talked about it and mm -hmm. he said i told him I couldn't get past the opening scene. It was too long. It was black and white. Like I was, I couldn't do it. Yeah. He was like, "Were you got to finish? Get past the opening scene, and you'll see that it's good." And I was like, "Okay, well, I don't know about it, but maybe, maybe one day." Yeah. Well, when you're on the road with them during the playoffs, he can he he'll, he can get in your ear. He can give you his little DVD player, whatever it needs to be, and, and and try to get you through it. Let's end on this. What, what, what have you been able to do for fun up in Maine? I always find it fun when guys go from Boston up to Maine. Like, you know, the weather can be a little bit volatile. Have you found good spots to eat, things to do? What are you, what are you doing up in Maine? Yeah, the main thing is just going around trying every food place I can. Um, I went to one place the other day 
um, and I got like a sweet Thai chili mac and cheese, and it was fire. Mm. I would say that that's that's pretty much my fun. Whenever I'm not doing basketball, it's like, oh, I'm gonna go out here and try this new lobster place, this new you know Mexican place, or whatever it is. And um, yeah. Maine has not disappointed me when it comes to food. I can tell you that. I was going to say, were you a seafood guy before this? Have you dabbled in the lobster rolls since you've been up there? How's that going? I've dabbled in the seafood, but being from Texas, it's always mm. more like crab, like shrimp, you know, stuff like that. Um, but when I got up here, I had my first lobster roll um, while in Boston and then Maine. And, you know, it was, it was eye-opening. It was a life-changing <laughs> experience. I do that so myself. It was really, really good. And I almost eat one every day. Oh, wow. All right. Well, Jordan, good luck in the G League playoffs. We'll see you back down here in Boston for the Celtics playoff run. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. Thank you for inviting me. Look no further than the award-winning 24 Auto Group. With over 2,600 vehicles in stock, the brands you love. Backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24autogroup.com. All right, Jordan Walsh, clearly a, a quick learner, seeking out lobster rolls in Maine, finding the best food up there. Uh, you know, the one question that I had on my little sheet that I am kicking myself for not asking is Jordan shares the same birthday as Jason Tatum. What a what a great thing and a bad thing and the same thing. I, the, 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 the day that everyone is celebrating maybe the, the best Celtic, the top Celtic, and poor Jordan Walsh is just going to kind of be I forgot, man, this year you'll remember, I think he was with the team on March 3rd. And unfortunately, here in the DNP against his hometown, Dallas Mavericks, on a day that was, you know, uh, uh, or maybe that was the, the Memphis game. Either, either way, they, he, he he didn't get the full spotlight that night. And uh, no, that was reserved for, for Luca and uh, Jason Tatum and that big showdown that day. So, hey. Uh, when you're a 20 year old rookie, you got to roll with the punches. Here's what stands out. So you go through the numbers of Jordan up in the G League 14.7 points, shooting 36.1% on three point shots, seven and a half rebounds, 1.3 assists, one steal, 0 0.8 blocks per game, 27 games, four double doubles in there. Um, I think one of the things when I go through, when I've watched highlights, when um, you try to track the, the development, you know, it does need to improve ball security. Um, some of that is just, you know, they're running a lot through him at times and giving him that opportunity as a focal point, as a draft pick for the Celtics. Um, you know, but I, I do think, you know, we saw it in summer league, the ability to be a potential three and D guy. So you start thinking ahead and all right. So I don't think the Celtics roster potentially is going to change over too much, but we know that Jalen Supermax is hitting the books this summer. Jason Tatum will likely sign his this summer and that will hit the books next year. If you're going to commit 50 plus million dollars a year to Jason and Jalen, if you're paying Kristaps Porzingis 30 million, Derek White's going to be due for a new deal that's probably going to be over 30 million. We're going to see what happens with Drew Holiday and do they give him upwards of 40 million dollars per year? Like there's there's only so much you can do to fill out the bench from there and you're hopefully you can retain guys like Sam Hauser and Luke Cornett who came, again had G League experience and came through that pipeline. But you really need guys like Jordan Walsh who are cost controlled as draft picks of this team in deep into the future that to, to, to both develop not only into role players, but guys that you can kind of lean on here. And so I, I, I want to see what, what, like how quickly that happens, how quickly can Jordan distinguish himself on a team that's filled with talent. Now he checks a lot of the boxes of what they need in terms of a defensive minded player. Doesn't need a lot of offense run through him. If you're going to be a bench player on the, on this Celtics team, probably best for you to be able to come in and give a little bit of a defensive intensity, but there is a balance there. When you look at the guys that are playing on this team, it's Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, guys that, that they trust offensively and can be out there and create space for your superstars and not be, you know, non shooters. And I think Jordan has the potential to, to consistently knock down that three point shot, but that's going to be a big part of it. He's really got to evolve into a three and D guy. And so, again, I go back to it. It's one thing to do it in summer league. It's one thing to do it in the G League. There's got to be a, uh, some real development there to become an everyday sort of guy and to, to evolve into a role player. But, you know, let's say the team doesn't have O'Shea Brissett on the roster next year and there's a need for another wing. We keep talking about, like, the one thing they were missing was maybe another serviceable wing. 
that they could lean on. I think there's a real opportunity here for Jordan Walsh to be that guy. And it's, it's unique to think about because um, they, they haven't had that real opportunity to develop young guys. I remember even when they traded for Derek White, Brad was brought it up in our conversation right after he said, you know, we've got to be a little bit like the Miami Heat who go out and find ways to find these young gems and develop them. And then you can slot them with your established talent and not have to, to, you know, be paying big bucks for that. They far exceed their production, their value in this league. So um, the Celtics have a couple other guys in the pipeline here, obviously uh, Nemesh Kate on the two-way deal. He was huge at the start of this year, a luxury to be able to kind of bounce him back and forth from Maine uh, while Luke Cornett was injured, while KP was, you know, in and out of the lineup, the, it was a chance for Nemish to to really play and get time. And there was always this thought of w- whether he'll be on the parent roster. You know, they sell this can add someone to that 15th spot before the end of the season if they want to and carry that player into the postseason. Um, even J.D. Davison, another who's sort of on the same kind of pathway as, you know, not quite as a high of a pick as Jordan Walsh but has gotten the opportunity to sort of develop behind the scenes. There's been great progress there in terms of, you know, harnessing his natural abilities. And, you know, that's a guy that will also get an opportunity next season and into the future to show he can be a depth piece. Um, And it's good that the Celtics are now, you know, maximizing that main experience. I like, even since when I first started covering this team, I was trying to think like Avery Bradley would pop up there. And that's weird because it's it's like a first round pick who, you know, you knew was going to be part of the team. He just, Celtics were so good at that point. He needed to go sort of figure out how to calm down a little bit. He was, he wasn't making a lot of shots at the start there. Uh, but the Celtics really have got a hit in terms of wherever they draft. So let's say they they have the 30th pick this year and they use it. Like, can you get a guy that can spend some time in the G League, but eventually hit this roster? And is that time in Maine setting him up for success? So shout out to the the G League uh affiliate this year you know obviously they've they've had some turnover with the coaching situation bringing in uh Blake this year and and giving him the reins and and uh you know every coach that has been there Alex Barlow you know it's through the through the run here has 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 done a good job of sort of getting guys ready to play whatever system the Celtics are doing and giving them the best chance to succeed when they're up there they deserve a lot of credit for uh for helping the Celtics make sure these guys are are on a pathway and eager to see exactly how it goes for Jordan Walsh. Check out that game tonight. Let's hope they stick around in the playoffs. But again, what what a luxury for Jordan. Like right as soon as as soon as that ends, he gets to come back down with this team. There's probably there's six games left in the Celtics season, depending on when main season ends. You know, there's an opportunity for him to play some big minutes, maybe eat up some time in the final games of the year, get a chance to probably, I mean, he's only got 40 minutes so far this season, a chance to probably double that output depending on how much he's here for. And then, I, like I said, even if he's just on the bench watching this postseason run, that's going to be valuable for him and just getting that, learning through osmosis, seeing what it takes to play on that stage. All right, let's flip-flop from the G League up to the parent club. The Celtics coming down the stretch here. But, you know, I think we know 60 wins here. Celtics are a championship favorite. That hasn't hasn't changed for a while now. But you start looking at the East, the potential matchups in the playoffs. Our buddies over at Fanatic Sportsbook. I was looking at who in the Eastern Conference has the best odds to win the championship. All right, you got the Celtics, plus 200. The Bucs still lingering there at plus 750, though, after losing to the Wizards and the Grizzlies. You can see that number starting to slide a little bit. And then the next Eastern Conference team is the Philadelphia 76ers at plus 3,000. That's sort of intriguing to me because, let's face it, where the 76ers linger right now, they are a potential play-in opponent. Now, the Celtics will play, essentially, seven, eight teams will play. The loser of that matchup will play the winner of the 9-10 matchup, and whoever wins that game advances. So let's say, uh, I think Indy just slipped. So let's say Indy and Philly play in that first 7-8 game, and Indy wins. Philly drops into that second play-in game. Now they're playing the winner of Hawks Bulls. There's a chance that Philadelphia comes out of there as the eighth seed. And now a team with getting back Joel Embiid is your first round opponent. Do the Sixers worry me? If you're a, a familiar listener of this program, if you watch our PGL programming, you know that I am not bullish on the Sixers at any point in not because of Embiid, but because of just their general propensity to to lack in the playoffs. And so 
uh, with uh, in being in dealing with a meniscus injury and coming back from that. I, I'm not overly concerned about that, but that is probably harder than you want to work in round one of the postseason. Certainly when you start thinking ahead to, you know, potential second round matchups and how ironic today the news comes out that the Knicks are shutting down Julius Randle. He'll have season ending surgery on that shoulder. You know, maybe that matchup, if that's the four, if that's the one four matchup, maybe you feel a little bit better about that. But then there's still Cleveland and Orlando. Everyone's jockeying at the top. You know, you don't know who exactly will will land in that spot. So while the Celtics shouldn't be fearful of anybody based on the way they played, especially the way that, you know, you think back to 2022, one of the best things about it was they drew a hard path and they sort of found motivation in that. But the, also having to go to six, seven games in a lot of these series, that adds up. And I think you saw it even last year with Tatum twisting an ankle in game seven against the Heat. And all of a sudden it gets difficult to get to the finish line. So this would be well served to take care of these matchups a little bit earlier, preserve energy and be ready to go, especially if you end up seeing a team like the Denver Nuggets at the end. So the fact that Philly's still in that mix from our friends and fanatics shows that, you know, they're still pretty bullish on if they get an MVP caliber production from Joel Embiid that could be a tough matchup no matter where uh you encounter them so eager to see if that is the potential 1-8 matchup Celtics are back in action on Friday night we'll be here with you on the post game pod so go like subscribe check us out on the YouTube page we'll catch you next time on the Celtics Talk podcast